chasing Atlanta, y'all are losing me. Like, you know, I had to do my interview with Devon last night, so I didn't get to watch it last night. But goddamn, I tried to catch up a minute ago, and I nodded off like four times. Y'all got to get together, honey. What's going on, y'all? This is your boy, Scattered by Nature TV, and we're here for another review of Chasing Atlanta Season 4 Episode. I think this is Episode 4, right? Okay, so let's get into the mix. So, um, we pick up where we left off last week with Kendra versus Oliver, this tired-ass beef that I'm so tired of talking about. At this point in time, I just feel like this Kendra needs to get over it. I feel like Kendra needs to get over it. Like, we understand what's gooey. We understand that the, that the disrespect that Oliver gave you when you was in jail was a fucking enough. At the end of the day, you felt like he was your friend and he turned out not to be your friend. And at this point, you just gotta leave well enough alone. If you see that a motherfucker ain't ride for you the way that you need them to ride for you, then you just need to let it go, okay? Because at the end of the day, you make yourself look crazy every time you get into it with this man about this same damn situation. Like, Oliver came in with no disrespect. He came in trying to, um, you know, be cordial with you at somebody else's event and then you come out here throwing your jabs and your shade calling him a fake-ass bitch. Regardless of if he is a fake-ass bitch, there really wasn't the time or the place. At the end of the day, y'all don't need to be addressing y'all issues in front of a public audience anyway. Y'all need to be addressing y'all issues amongst each other one-on-one -on -one, and that's it you know what i mean and oliver talking about he gonna drag this girl oliver you ain't about that life you know you ain't gonna fight nobody so stop but kendra you need to stop being an emotional ass bully okay at the end of the day you have a right to feel wrong but at the same time it's like girl like you need to let it go because at this point in time it's just too much like it's draining it's just a uh, 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 energy sucker is just too fucking much, okay? And my opinion is too much. So I don't need you coming for me talking about how my disrespect is enough. I'm just telling you what it is, child. I'm letting you know what's gooey, okay? You let that shit go because it's too toxic, too draining, too tiring, too emotional. Let that shit go and focus on your music, child. You can't be focusing on nobody that ain't focusing on you. Then Lil Kendra starts going off on Travis, and rightfully so. I feel like this Travis, you just came amongst these people tonight. You don't know these damn people. You don't know the history between Kendra and Oliver. So I feel like you speaking too much. You saying too much. You telling her to let it go is different from a motherfucker like... Troy telling her to let it go because Troy been around the situation. He friends with Lil Kendra and Oliver. He could, he could say that. But you don't even know the situation. You're not even involved. So why are you even talking about the situation? Why are you even giving your damn opinion? Or why are you strongly opinionated anyway? You might need to let it go as well, child. So Dominique, keep me so with Cameron, okay? And uh, listen, I don't, why is Cameron still on the show again? And I'm asking because he really don't be doing shit. Like, the only person I really see him film with is Dominique. After a while, that shit gonna get boring. Like, why are you a main cast member if you only filming with Dominique? If that's the case, then you might as well be a B cast member and just every time you pop up, you pop up as Cameron, Dominique's friend. That's what it needs to be at this point. I'm just... I'm just saying. Dominique pretty much fills in Cameron on everything that went down at Troy's party. You know what I mean? You know, you know, Dominique always gotta give the tea in the mess, child. And to be honest, Dominique is messy as hell. Dominique is messy as fuck. But for whatever reason, I still like Dominique regardless of him being messy. I don't know why. It's like, I feel like he's so fucking adorable, but he messy as hell. But it's like I could deal with his mess. It's just some people on reality shows, they messy as fuck. But at the same time, I could, I could fuck with them. But some people are just messy as fuck and I can't fuck with them. Like a bitch like Giselle, she messy as a motherfucker, but I can't fuck with her. Or like Carly Rae, she messy as fuck, but I can actually deal with her just a little bit. I don't know what it is. I guess it's people's personalities that make me, you know, be able to deal with their ass, I guess. I don't know. But um, he tells Cameron about everything that happened with Kendra and Oliver and all of this other stuff. And then he started talking about Travis. So Dominique started going in on Travis. He was saying that when, when Travis had hugged him, you know, um, he pretty much pulled him down on him. And he felt like it was some disrespectful shit. He feels like, you know, he was trying to cop a feel or whatever it was he was trying to do. And that shit is kind of weird, you know what I mean? Like, like listen... 
Like, when I see a motherfucker and I ain't never met them before, like, yeah, you can give me a hug, even though I don't really like to hug people like that. You know, I am an Aquarius. I'm very emotionally detached. I don't really like affection like that. So, if you hug me, fine. But at the same time, don't, like, don't come in squeezing me and shit like you've known me for more than two hours because you haven't. So, you don't have the right to be squeezing on me and pulling me all on top of you and shit like that. Like, that shit can get you popped. Don't do that. But I feel like Dominique was doing, was putting 10 on 10 with this situation. I mean, granted, yeah, he pulled you on top of him, but that's it. You know what I mean? If you felt disrespectful, disrespected cool but i the way he was carrying on the entire episode i don't really think it warranted that but that's just my opinion love 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 oliver's relationship with mama twix i love me some mama twix honey um I, I forgot what mama twix was doing but they started talking about um oliver's beef with kendra and everything like that and um Mama Twix is like, I don't give a damn who you is. I don't give a damn how grown you get. You steal my son and I will fight a motherfucker about my son. I don't play about my son. And you know, most black mamas is like that now. They do not play about their damn sons. It doesn't matter what the fucking situation is. They don't fucking play about their son. I just think at this point, Oliver just needs to talk to Kendra about the situation. And if she don't fucking accept the apology or accept his explanation for anything, then that's just what it is. Just call a spade a spade, let it go and move the fuck on. Because this whole, like I said, this whole situation is very much so toxic and draining. Nobody wants to keep hearing about this. Damn, Mama Twisting got married and, and Oliver didn't even know her ass was dating. How the fuck did she keep that to herself? Because I know if my mama get her man, she gonna have to tell me who the fuck it is, who, where he from, if he got any type of mental illness in his family. I got to know every goddamn thing because bitch, that's my motherfucking mama, okay? I've seen her in, in two different relationships in my life. My daddy and my ex-stepfather, who she just signed the divorce papers to a couple of days ago. Yes, bitch. But yeah, I seen her in two different relationships my whole entire life. And yes, yeah, so being 31 years old, any man that come in my mama life, I got to know who the fuck he is before it goes any further. Trust me on that. Now, as we're there at Dominique's house with Rico, we get a special visitor here, and it's King Kane. Apparently, Kane and Dominique already know each other, you know what I mean? Like, Dominique was partially one of the reasons why Kane decided to move to Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? And, um, it's kind of like, you know, he left the past in the past. He left the girls back in Dallas, so now he's already back you know, trying to get his brands together. You know what I'm saying? And then they start talking about support. Like, Kane has cut his mama off, some one of his sisters off, because he feel like they don't support him. You know what I mean? And Dominique also felt the same type of way. You know, he got kicked out of his mama house because he was gay. You know what I mean? And he felt like, you know, ain't nobody gonna do this. Who gives a fuck about puppies and shit like that? And you know, that's really fucked up when your own family members don't support you because... I'm not going to lie to you. I really try not to talk about my family shit no more on my videos because the last time I spoke about my family shit, maybe like seven to eight years ago, people got all up in their feelings when I was telling my truth about my family dynamics. But what I am going to say is I remember it was a specific person in my family that um, has never had anything positive to say about me. Regardless of how much I ride for them and support them in their endeavors, they treat me like crap, they act like I'm a second class citizen, and they have never said anything nice about me. No, Regardless of what I do, they never have nothing nice to say. I remember when I first started doing videos, they called it stupid. But yet, one of their friends started doing the same thing I'm doing, a, vi a YouTube channel, and yet and still, they supported them, but when I was doing it, it was an issue. Or... One of my brothers um, decided that they was going to do a YouTube channel. And it's like, oh, whatever you do, make sure you give me the link. I'm going to support it. But never supported my shit. Never reposted anything that I posted about my my content or anything like that. But want me to support everything that they do. Want me to share shit and all this other stuff. But never giving me that same support. So I know how it feels when your family don't even support you. That shit is fucked up. The same people that don't support you want you to support them. And sometimes you just gotta get in what the fuck they give you. Nothing. Now, Kane asked about Troy having a big D. And it just seems like that's all motherfuckers care about is whether Troy got a big D. But I do wanna know. Troy, do you got a big D? You know my DMs are open. So if you want me to know if you got a big D, just send me the DM. I ain't gonna send it to nobody else. I ain't that type of bitch. Speaking of Troy, him and Q catch up. They're talking about everything that's going on in Atlanta. You know, Troy was basically saying, anytime I say your name, heads turn. Whenever I say Jayla name, heads turn. So what? It's not the same without Q in the streets being in Atlanta. And he starts talking about the beef with Lauren England that he needs to settle. But then when he brings up Q, Oliver, not, yeah, when he brings up Oliver, I'm sorry, Q hurries up and get the fuck out the phone. Q, what's tea with you and Oliver? 
What is tea with you and Oliver? I really got to know. And it's time for Oliver's food tasting. Oliver invites Dominique, um, Rico, Troy. They are all there amongst other people. And the first thing that Dominique asks is Oliver. Ask him about it. He asks Oliver about this dude that Oliver talked to. I'm like, Dominique is so damn nosy. Dominique is always trying to get the tea. But you know, Oliver really didn't say nothing else about it, child. Now they're discussing Lil' Kendra yet again, and I'm just over it. Like, how many times are we going to keep talking about this? Then we start talking about Q. How many times are we going to talk about Q? Let's move on. Then we start talking about Travis and his Sharpie marker beard. And Dominique starts telling Oliver about how, you know, the move that... Troy made, not Troy, the move that Travis made when he pulled him on top of him. And then Oliver said that, you know, he grabbed my ass too and I had to let him know not to do that. You know, he tried to talk to me and all this other stuff. So they was, so they all making him look like the Benzino of the group. Making him look like, you know, he be trying to get at everybody like he a thirst bucket or some shit like that. Like they are going in on Travis. I'm like, well, damn. So Travis finna be the punch bag this season. And Dominique finna like that match to make him this shit too. So I'm like, oh shit, it is. Child, Travis, watch your back now. You in danger, girl. So at this, so um, Troy, Kendra, and Dominique are at the studio with Rico, and they catch up, and they start talking about the Oliver situation. And I just think that at this point, Troy just need to let it go. At this point, just let it the fuck go, cause Kendra ain't gonna let it go. She gonna keep on bringing this shit up. It's gonna always be an issue every time Oliver come around. And at this point, it's very tiring. Don't nobody want to keep talking about this shit, cause I know I don't. That shit is fucking tiring like when a person keeps bringing all this negative energy around it becomes too much Kendra ain't gonna never let it go and it is what it is you might just need to stick a fork in it and just let it go Troy and Dominique go outside and Rico as well and they all they both tell Troy to let it go and his confession or Troy was like okay we just not mean y'all so y'all really don't know what's going on so y'all can't tell me to let it go yes the fuck they can Yes, the hell they can tell you to let it go. Like, what the fuck do you mean they can't tell you to let it go? Yes, the fuck they can. They ain't doing it to be telling your ass right. How the fuck you mad because they telling your ass right? They're right. You need to let it the fuck go. Okay? Let it go because it ain't no point of you constantly bringing it up. Ain't no point of you constantly trying to make them talk. Kendra ain't letting the shit go. She don't give a fuck about Oliver. Oliver tried, but Kendra ain't letting up. So let this shit go. Go. Period. You can't get mad at nobody for speaking the truth on your ass. And Kendra coming outside giving all types of Auntie Kendra with that wig and that cigarette looking like it's a damn misty that she's smoking. She said, uh huh, keep talking. Now, when she said that, I was hollering when she said that. But just let the shit go, Troy. Let it go. You're going to bust a damn blood vessel getting annoyed over somebody else's issues. If you don't want the drama, you don't invite them both around. If you want the drama, invite them both around. But if, if, if you can't, if you. Because at this point, it's here. The mess is here. And you're going to have to deal with it. Either you separate them or you keep them both around. And you just going to have to swallow it. Because that's, that's just what it is. So with that being said, y'all, this is my review on Chasing Atlanta. Be sure to like, rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'm out of here, y'all. Till next time, peace out.